welcome to Nine on the Positive Side. Thank you so much for being here with us this weekend. One nonprofit is making a stop in Emerald Isle to give families a break from stress in their everyday lives as they're fighting some of the toughest battles. Now, your sides, Claire Curry has more on the Lighthouse Family Retreat. It's just a place where people can come and love on families that are going through a huge storm in their life right now. Through dance and song. The Lighthouse Family Retreat gives those living through childhood cancer an all-expenses-paid vacation with others who understand their battle. One family began their fight against stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma just last year. It just feels like such a supportive environment and I feel so blessed to be surrounded by other people who understand at a level where they're just wanting to give everything they have. It just is wonderful. With over 100 volunteers welcoming the families with open arms, as many of them have gone through the retreat themselves. The Paredes family got involved 10 years ago when they found out their son had cancer. He was diagnosed on his fifth birthday with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And once we got here, uh, we realized how broken and how burnt out we were. And it became this breath of fresh air in that journey. Uh, we came out of it in the process of healing. Through a week of workshops, activities, and bonding time. Tons of swimming, tons of crafts. Nine Square is the rock star of this uh, retreat game-wise. The mission is to spread light, hope, and encouragement to every family affected. And it's really nice to, to be part of the love that we feel through Lighthouse, through the families serving us, and just just sit back and, and, and feel, feel love. And that was not in your sides. Claire Curry reporting this year. The nonprofit is hosting 17 other retreats along the East Coast, serving more than 200 families over in Ohio. Now visually impaired children had the chance to try out different water sports. Check this out. It's all part of Envision Blind Sports Summer Camp. The campers are kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding and sailing on the water. This year, there are more than 70 campers from 12 different states participating in this week long camp. It gives children with visual impairments the chance to try 25 different sports, meet new friends, increase independence and advocate for themselves. A lot of people underestimate and don't understand uh, just how much people that are visually impaired or blind can do. So we teach the kids how to go back into their schools and their communities and advocate so that they can be part of all the activity. The campers range in age from 5 to 18. Now back here in the East, making community connections. That is the goal of this rock snake project in the city of Kinston. Lisa Nolan saw the project on Pinterest and was inspired to bring it to the city. The snake is called Davis and it's just getting started on Blunt Street. Nolan says all you have to do is paint a rock and add it to their collection. It sparked a lot of interest, so I'm hoping that eventually it will take off and and just see what we can do with it. If we could get it all the way to Queen Street, I think that would be amazing, but um, <laughs> I don't know that we can get it that far, but you know, down to the end of the block would be nice. <laughs> Nolan says this is the perfect opportunity to do some family bonding and paint rocks together. She says it's also a chance to bond with your community. If you're looking for some fresh local produce, you might be in luck. Coltrane Hardware now has a produce picking stand in Aden. You can take vegetables home and leave what you don't need for others. Organizers say they've already seen several neighbors helping each other out with this stand. People need each other and we're missing that. And through the pandemic, we saw just a separation of relationships and food is the number one way to bring people together. So what a way to say, hey, you're my neighbor. I love you. Here's some vegetables. The produce stand is part of a partnership with the new community garden in Aden. It's open 24 seven right now outside of the hardware store located on 3rd Street. Next, we're taking you to Lenore County for our classroom conversation. How students are getting ready for the school year in some fun ways. When you think about summer school, you probably think about sitting in a classroom, maybe wishing you were able to be outside. As none of your sides, Aaron Jenkins reports, that's not the case for Lenore County Public Schools. 
It uses that short O sound. What's that sound like again? Oh. Oh. Cole is back in session this summer for about 1,700 students oh, in Lenore County. Just maybe. Summer is such a fun time. The students get so hyped up. In elementary school, they're working on the basics. We're doing reading and vocabulary and it's fun. Making sure our students are getting all of the literacy foundation we can because that does spiral into other things like math and science and social studies. After the pandemic, these lessons are even more important. We have seen in the past some gaps that COVID did cause, but with our instruction in Laura County, teachers are working really hard at closing those gaps and we have seen a lot of growth. Down the hallway, middle schoolers are in their own classes. I never really like been down to sixth grade hall, so this is like one of my first times being down here, so it's good to know what's down here and where everything is. Normally in elementary, they would do like a lot of group work, but you got to do a lot of independent work in middle school. These students are in the bridge program for like soon to be middle schoolers. Like, like possibly they can make it into rows. It kind of just preparing them for middle school. So they'll get that reading, they'll get that math, but they also get that social emotional so they can help them build some self-confidence. Uh, how do you feel it went? For some high school students, they're working hand in hand with local businesses. We're working with child nutrition services, especially in high schools of students who's not eating school lunch. So they're coming to us for solutions to help us solve that problem and get them students back in the cafeteria. This District C program is developing some valuable life skills in the students. We want to see our students develop as leaders. Uh, this is a leadership type of program and what we are fascinated by as uh, team coaches is to be able to um, sit back and watch the ideas flow. From elementary to middle to high school, these Lenore County students and educators see the difference summer school is making. We support our students, support our parents, and support our teachers just to make sure that all of our students have access to the education they deserve. I feel that they want me to be where the, the best I can be. They get me to prepare to where I want to be. And that was nine on your signs. Aaron Jenkins reporting a new bookstore is open in Wilson. It's called Novel Nest Bookstore. It's actually opening up because of a Facebook group. The owner of the store, Zoe Taylor, started selling books through the page last October, and it obviously just grew from there. She works two other jobs. She says the store serves as a quiet space for her and feels more like a hobby than a job. Nine to five, I work at senior centers and I'm over their state certification process. And then part time, I am a 911 dispatcher in Raleigh. So this is totally different from anything else that I do. It doesn't feel like I'm coming to work after I leave work. Taylor says she hopes the store continues to grow. You can see more of our interview with Taylor over on WNCT.com. That's our website. You can find it in our online original section under the features tab. And if you have a story idea, we'd like to hear from you. We want to hear about the positive things happening where you live. Just email newsdesk at WNCT.com with your story ideas for us. You can also reach out to me on Facebook or over on Twitter. And coming up next on nine on the positive side, we're talking Barbie, a deeper look into Barbie's history and years later, what continues to just make it so popular. A pink wave swept through theaters over the weekend with Barbie earning $155 million at the box office domestically, the biggest opening of the year so far. Lots of people have been talking about it. It's a comedy, but it's also showing how Barbie inspired generations of girls to dream big. It took some very hardworking women to make that happen. Jamie Yukis has their story. This is the fashion that got me hired at Mattel. Take a walk through Carol Spencer's home. I have over 350. You have more than 350 Barbie dolls. In this room alone. And you just might think you're in Barbie's dream house. That's my first design that was accepted for the line. Spencer, a spry 90 years old, spent 35 years as a Barbie fashion designer at Mattel. It's really a wonderful feeling. I think of every child that played with the Barbie doll as my child. The very first Dr. Barbie in 1973 was her vision. 
most of it, doctors, surgeons at that time were all men. And as long as we were exploring careers for a child, I thought, why not? Did you even at the time realize what impact Barbie would have on children? No. No, I, I didn't realize it at all. Barbie, you're beautiful. Since bursting onto the scene in 1959, Barbie has given kids the chance to dream about their futures. I'm going to be a doctor just like you. Having more than 250 careers. She was flying through outer space as an astronaut 18 years before Sally Ride made the trip. The Barbie dream while living a life of style. This independent, strong female role model in Barbie that owned her own house, and not only that, was rocking millions of careers. Lisa McKnight is the executive vice president and global head of Barbie at Mattel. That was really progressive at that time. It was very progressive at that time, and you think about the context of the 1950s, women couldn't even cash their own checks. While many toys for girls at the time focused on caring for children, Mattel co-founder Ruth Handler saw opportunity. She was the one who was the sales genius, the marketing genius. Biographer Robin Gerber says Handler tapped into a feminist movement. Little girls were asking for other kinds of Barbies. Well, they started to want Barbies who actually had careers, and that has, of course, blossomed to everything you could think of. By the 90s, the New York Times calculated 95% of all American girls ages 3 to 11 had at least one Barbie. <laughs> Tour guide Barbie. And she appeared everywhere from movies to music videos. But over the years, Mattel has addressed criticism that the doll was sometimes out of touch or contributing to unrealistic beauty standards, especially after a 2016 study found that young girls who played with the traditional Barbie doll had more dissatisfaction with their bodies than girls who played with curvier dolls. We were hearing playback from parents and focus groups that they didn't see Barbie as a role model. There wasn't a lot of depth behind the brand. Barbie's creators made efforts to expand her reach, unveiling dolls of different races, body shapes, and sizes. Barbie has had such an evolution. I can't help but notice right away, wheelchair Barbie. Yes, we are so proud of that doll. It's so important for kids to see themselves in the doll and to have that representation, but also it's really important for kids at a young age to learn about empathy. Oh! And at the World of Barbie in Santa Monica, California. I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Love fantastic, fantastic. You can see the empathy and inspiration on full display. I found an astronaut. Yay, that's me. And I'm going to be an astronaut when I grow up. These look like different country Barbies. They are. Well, she's going to continue changing as we change. Carol Spencer, who spent decades bringing Barbie to life, knows the doll's impact will continue for generations. You know, Ruth Handler said at one point after she left Mattel, it's amazing how so many different children love Barbie in many different ways. What are those different ways? Some love playing with the doll as for the careers. So many people love her for her fashion. Mm -hmm. We have you to thank for that. Well, thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed it. And that was Jamie Yukis reporting. So we all know Barbie's counterpart, Ken, but here's the thing. Barbie never married, even though she had plenty of wedding dresses. The designers wanted children playing with her to design on their own what she did and how she dressed. And still speaking of Barbie over in Texas, you could say this woman, Diana Harris, just loves Barbies. So much so she's surrounded by more than 400 of them. And her full collection, guess what, doesn't even fit in this whole room. It actually expands. This all started about 25 years ago, and her collection has grown to now more than 600 dolls. Barbie today still has the philosophy she started with, and she's grown into this diverse, um, all-encompassing that everyone can embrace, which I just think is wonderful. And you may have guessed this. Harris bought a ticket for the movie right when it came out, and she also picked up the latest dolls that are out.
If you're looking for more good news, go to WNCT.com. There you'll find these stories and more under the nine on the positive side tab. You can find that under features. We also have all of our nine on the positive side shows there for you to rewatch if you'd like to. Well, this is the Guinness Book of World Record holder. His mouth-watering collection sets world records. Just shy of 11,000 models from literally all over the planet. One of Roy's folks turns up the heat. Like life a little spicy? Well, you don't have to look too far. Chad Tucker takes us to High Point, home to the world's largest hot sauce collection. Well, here we are, a little bigger than you thought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> About 27 years ago, it was first Christmas with my wife, and she bought, I think it was seven bottles, and they were like stocking stuffers, if you will. Vic Klinko. That's what it's all about. Likes so it hot. Back when I was like six or seven, my grandfather had a garden in his backyard, and he grew jalapenos. And that seed and has grown? A little bit of everything, right? <laughs> well, into this. It is the largest hot sauce collection in the entire world. Just shy of 11,000 models from literally all over the planet. Every hot sauce you could possibly imagine. This is the Guinness Book of World Record holder as the hottest hot sauce. One side of his so expansive family. basement, oh, um, a taste from every so state. And these are all domestic. This is all here. This is everything from the states. Yeah, and so the other um, from around the world. Mexico's got a pretty good Caribbean, yeah. Bahamas, um, Costa Rica is a huge. His fiery taste buds. Yes. Have earned him the nickname Pepper Boy. I kind of did a K. John's Corner, if you will. In my 27 years of collecting, I have adopted about eight different collections. And then also, I have a lot of folks that have gone out of business and they still have their sauces. But you can kind of see, I mean, just some of the artistry and some of the bottles. And, and he shares his spicy collection on social media. It's gotten to that point where this thing is really kind of taking on, you know, the, that life of its own. Right? Yeah. A life yeah. of its own. <laughs> it's just too hot to handle. I just think it's it's gotten to a point where spice is almost a flavor anymore. In High Point. Everybody's looking for it. Feel the heat with one of Roy's folks. I mean, the popularity of it is just amazing. Chad Tucker. I'm just going to keep collecting and, and keep adding them in. Fox A News. It's a fun time to be a chili head right now. His collection is just so impressive. Now, Guinness World Record officials believe Vic's collection is the largest in the world, but before they can actually give him that title, they need Vic to catalog his collection, which he says he's working on. And I'm sure it's going to take a lot of time to do all of those hot sauces and make the collection all come to life. Thank you so much for joining us for nine on the positive side. But before we go, we have someone visiting from the North Pole. Check this out. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.